Well, good morning or whenever you are watching and welcome to Catalyst Church at Home. Uh, I'm coming to you in a different format because this weekend we as a church are meeting at the Bethesda Row Cinema and unable to stream our services, but we wanted to make sure we brought a message to our online family. And I'll, let me say this, uh, for those of you watching online, whether you are traveling this weekend or you're sick, homesick with the kids, um, or like many of you, you live around the world, but tune in the Catalyst regularly online. Um, I want you to know uh, that you are part of our family. And Christina and I are honored to pastor you. We love you. In any way that we can ever serve you, please let us know. And uh, before I dive in, I want to mention a couple of things happening in the life of our church. Uh, first is this. Next weekend, we'll be back normal uh, service times, 9 o'clock, 1030, 12 o'clock streaming services. Uh, if you live in the D.C. area, we'd love to see you in person uh, at the Bethesda Hotel. We are back at our normal meeting place. Uh, but I wanted to make an announcement of some things that are happening in the life of our church. First, we are starting today with 21 days of prayer. It's one of my favorite times of the year, our 21 days of prayer. We do it in January and in August, a time where we seek God together as a church family. Family. And uh, we have a website, a resource site with messages and book recommendations and a worship playlist and prayer guides and a children's prayer guide for you um, to, to during your these 21 days as you seek God. Uh, we also want to invite you to join us uh, starting tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. via Zoom. So wherever you're watching from or wherever that would be in your time zone, but 7 a.m. Eastern. We are having an online prayer call Monday through Friday, these three weeks, 7 a.m. I want to invite you to join us as we seek God together. Uh, so whether you are getting kids ready uh, or you just got up or you're commuting into work or maybe you're watching halfway around the world and you're in the middle of your day, uh, you don't have to turn on your camera. Uh, you can keep your camera off, but join us. There'll be a brief um, devotional by our team as well as a time of prayer. I'm going to be leading tomorrow morning, uh, Monday morning, uh, August 5th, and we'd love to see you there, 7 a.m. The information's on our website, um, as well as our newsletter if you receive that. We'd love to see you for our prayer calls Monday through Friday. And then if you live in the D.C. area, starting next Saturday and for the next three Saturdays, August 10th, 17th, and 24th, we are having prayer gatherings at the Bethesda Hotel. Uh, these are one of my favorite services that we do as a church because we come together, have a few worship songs, a brief teaching, but then spend the majority of our time praying. Uh, so we'll have some individual prayer time and then a corporate prayer moment. Very powerful. Um, I, I know if you've been a part of it, how, how special they are. Uh, children are are welcome. Child care won't be provided, but we'll have some things for your kids uh, to be able to do. Uh, but we'd love for you to be there nine o'clock to 10 o'clock, one hour only uh, starting next Saturday, August 10th. We'd love to see you there for that. And then uh, we are having a pursuit night of worship and prayer, our second one of the year. We did one back in January. Uh, we do them during these 21 days. This is a night of extended worship, of extended prayer and ministry, uh, a special night where we allow um, just the Holy Spirit to, to move in a special way. We're believing God for miracles uh, that evening. So next Sunday, August 11th at 5 p.m. So we'll have our normal Sunday morning service times at the Bethesda Hotel. And then that evening at 5 p.m., we'll invite you for our pursuit night of worship and prayer together as we seek God. It's going to be a special, special time. So lean in with us. These 21 days of prayer, it's going to be special. Hey, before I dive into the message, let me also make reference. Uh, today is the first Sunday of the month, which for us as a church is our Believe Offering Update Sunday. And I know many of you who are on our online family, you give faithfully and you consistently. I want to thank you for your generosity, um, church. Your generosity is making a massive difference in the life of our church and beyond. And uh, as you know, about a year and a half ago, we started a two-year vision initiative called Believe. Uh, and this vision initiative of Believe was to really focus on three areas of vision. Uh, number one was expansion, reach more people with the good news of Jesus, which we're doing. Number two is next generation, raise up a generation of leaders. And then three is in the area of mission to make a difference, both in the D.C. area and beyond through outreach and missions. And uh, I want to thank you for your generosity and giving an update. Our goal was to raise three and a half million dollars of all in giving over two years. And I'm going to give you the update of where we stand as of today because of your faithful generosity. To date, again, about a year and a half in, 
a little over a year and a half, we've seen $2,915,825 come into God be the glory. Listen, God has taken those natural dollars and made a supernatural an eternal impact in people's lives. So thank you, thank you, thank you. That leaves us, we are 83% towards our goal. So come on church, 17% uh, left in our goal. And I know we're gonna, we're gonna crush that goal in Jesus' name for the glory of God to reach more people uh, in Jesus' name. And uh, your generosity is making a difference. Last month, we had our kids summer blast here at Catalyst Church. And I love what's happening in our next gen ministries. This is so exciting. Over the course of the month of July, get this, we saw 178 unique children come through our doors. That's 178 unique children that were reminded of who they are in Christ. They heard the good news of Jesus. They heard the life-changing word of God, and they built some Christian friendships with other children here at the church. That's amazing. So thank you so much. In fact, out of those 178, we had 11 new families. That's amazing. 11 new families find our church through our summer blast. So shout out to our kids ministry for an incredible summer blast. But I want to also thank you because of your generosity. We've been saving as a church for a our next home. Uh, we, we know that God has something for us. And I want to give you an update. You know, we are, we are raising this money for really because of Sundays like this. You know, being portable, we're reminded um, that the space is not our own and that there are Sundays we have to inconvenience ourselves. And uh, I know it puts a lot of effort on our team to, to, to make these shifts. But um, I want you to, your giving is enabling us to be positioned for a more permanent home. And I want to give you an update. Uh, we are still exploring two properties. Um, it takes a while to do proper exploration and due diligence of properties. Uh, but we are we are exploring two properties here locally. Um, and here's how that will impact you for our online family. Maybe you live um, in California or Ohio, or maybe you live in Nigeria, or you live in, in Guatemala, wherever you're tuning in from. How it impacts you is having a, our next home, a more permanent home, will enable us to even have a better online experience for you to better serve you and your family. So thank you for your generosity. I want to encourage to keep giving towards the mission that God has for us to lead people to become fully devoted followers of Christ. Um, Your giving is making a difference. You can give via our website, safe and secure, yourcatalystchurch.com. You can also give stock or asset via that website as well. But hey, let's dive in today. I'm excited to dive into this series. Uh, This series is called Thrive, Living a Fulfilled Life. And here's where it comes from, John 10, 10. Jesus says, the thief comes to only steal, kill, and destroy. That's the devil. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy your life. But I, Jesus says, have come that you may have life, watch this, and have it to the full. So this series is called Thrive, Living a Fulfilled Life, because Jesus came that you would not merely survive, but that you would thrive, that you would live a fulfilled life in Christ. In this series, we're going to be talking about that. In fact, it ties well into our our overall mission as a church, that we want to lead people, that's you, that's me, it's all of us, to become fully devoted followers of Christ, because we believe our best life is found in Christ. And we as a church want to take you on a spiritual journey. If you've been around Catalyst, you, you've heard this before. If you're one of the many new families, in fact, this year, we've had, we've had close to 600 new individuals come through our doors. If you're one of those new individuals who've come through our doors, uh, this might be newer to you, but we want to take you on a spiritual journey. We want you to know God, have a vibrant, growing relationship with Jesus. Uh, we don't want you to just approach church from a religious perspective, but have a growing relationship with God. Number two, we want you to find freedom. Freedom from those things that you know if they were not in your life, your life would be better. We want you to discover your unique God-given purpose. God has created you on purpose and with a purpose. And part of that purpose as a follower of Christ is to be connected to a local church. And uh, that's what we're here for. And then also is to make a difference, to make an eternal difference in your work life, your home life, your relationships as part of a church with your time and your talent and your resources. And we believe as you go on this spiritual journey and you become a more fully devoted follower of Christ, you will experience the abundant life. You will thrive. So this series, if you're newer to the church and you want to know what is Catalyst Church about, 
This series is really going to give you great insight on what we're about and what we hope for in your life because we believe that you can have a fulfilling life. You can thrive regardless of whatever season you find yourself in. You can thrive in Jesus' name. So I want to talk to you about that today um, as we dive into our first installment of this series. Uh, Today's message, we are talking about really a foundational element to thriving, and that is having a vibrant relationship with God. I get fired up about this. Here's why. Here's why. There was a period in my life years ago where I would not call my relationship with God vibrant. My, my approach is probably more religious. I, I didn't see what I now experience now. So I get excited because I now have a vibrant relationship with God. It brings me so much joy, so much fulfillment, and I want that for every single person. And today, that's what we're going to talk about. But before we dive in, let's pray. Father, we thank you. Today we get to come, God, wherever wherever every person's tuning in from, God, that we get to come together and gather online to hear your word, your life-changing word. And today we submit ourselves to it, knowing that you have a fulfilling life planned for us. We love you. We honor you. It's in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Hey, listen, I know today I'm not speaking to an in-person audience at all. I'm speaking just to our online audience. So make sure you're chatting it up in the chat area there in YouTube and Facebook. Uh, I want to hear you. Come on, I can feel you when you're talking back to me today. Come on. Uh, but let me, let, me, let me kick off a first scripture here. This is John 15, 11, the words of Jesus. He tells his disciples this and tells us this, that I have told you this. What's the this he's referring to? That this is he was talking to them about having a relationship with him. He said, I told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy would be complete. I love that. Jesus says, I want you to have a joy filled life. It reminds me, one of the favorite nights in the Burroughs household is family movie night. Listen, if you're, if you're a family, you have a family watching, this is a great uh, practice to put in your family. We love it. Family movie night. So every Friday night, uh, most Friday nights, uh, we, we, what we do is as a family, we all look forward to this. We, the kids make their own pizzas. Then they have pick out their own ice cream. And then they get to pick a movie of their choice. And then we cuddle up as a family. Come on, the three kids and even our dog Toby. Come on, he even loves movie night somehow now we get together we cuddle up on the couch we watch a movie eat pizza eat some ice cream and then we always top the night off with a little dance party because you know we're here to party so we have a little dance party before we go to bed but 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 what I love about movie night we've had it now for years is regardless of how our week has gone, like regardless of what we've encountered, the kids have encountered at school or we've encountered it that week, like there's so much joy in movie night. Like, like we look forward to movie night. Like when it comes, it's like a relief. Regardless of what was happening around us, we find joy. Watch this. Jesus says, I've come to give you a joy that regardless of the circumstances of your life, you can have it. So whether you've been promoted or you've been let go, you can have joy. Whether you're healthy or you've been, you're sick, you can have joy. Whether you have much or you have little, you can have joy. Whether a relationship just started or come on, you just broke up, you can have joy in Christ. Now, I want to I show you how you can have that joy in him. And let me speak to this. Some of you. That some of this will be new for you and you're saying, man, I'm excited to grow in a relationship with God and experience that joy. Let me also speak to some of you because you've had this joy before, but maybe you've lost the joy. Sometimes I found in the years of walking with Christ, sometimes we can lose joy. Sometimes it's because of disappointments. You probably have experienced some disappointments this year, right? We're, we're, we're in August of 2024, whenever you're watching this. Uh, but, but we probably had some disappointments in your life. And sometimes disappointments can have a way of, of depressing the joy in our life. Sometimes our relationship with God can just become a little bit dry, a little bit stale. And we can lose some of that joy. Or sometimes we lose our joy because of hurt from other people, maybe even other Christians. And here's my hope today is, is that God's Word inspires you to capture your joy once again. You know, the Bible often uses this term, you, you've heard it, rejoice. You know what rejoice actually means? To find joy again. And my hope for you today is you, you, you can rejoice in God, that you can find joy again. These 21 days of prayer, you can find joy again, not in your job, not in a relationship, not in what you have, but in Christ. So let me dive into point one. I got three points today on how you can, how you can experience this vibrant relationship with God. This first one's critical though. So, so to write this down is you first have to go all in with God. I want to pastor you 
And it's important that you understand this, is that when we, we want to experience all that God has for us, we have to go all in with Him. Here's what James says, James 1, verse 6. He says, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with a divided loyalty is as unsettled as the wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world. They are unstable in everything they do. James was saying this to a people group who, 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 who they loved God. They did, genuinely. But they were consumed with the things of the world. So they loved God, but, but God was kind of out here on the periphery. They were consumed with the things of life and building wealth and achieving success and, and relationships. Again, those things aren't bad things. They're just not the main thing. And he's saying, listen, if God remains an accessory to your life, you will miss out on the best that God has for your life. I'm going to say it again because it's really important. If God is an accessory to your life, like, like your relationship with God is based on your convenience or, or when it works for your schedule, then you won't experience the best. It's not until he's Lord of your life. So he says, don't be like the waves of the sea. I, I was at the beach recently and, and I was reminded of this because literally like on a dime, the conditions of the sea would change. Like we'd walk out in the morning and, and the wave conditions would be calm. And then by like mid-afternoon, a red flag would be up. There'd be an undertow. Like the waves, they would quickly change. It was, it was unstable. It was unpredictable. And James says, don't be that way when it comes to God. Do not waver. Do not be unstable. You're missing out on God's best. For some of you, this might look like you have periods of your life where you're kind of pursuing God and then periods of your life where you allow the busyness of maybe work or raising kids or relationships or whatever it might be get in the way. Or it might look like you allow God's word to influence some areas of your life, but not other areas of your life. Or maybe you come to church and you love Sundays or you tune in online, but you don't pursue God on Monday morning. Or maybe you're involved in church on, on you, 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 you tune in or you attend, but you haven't yet gotten connected I want to encourage you to go all in with God. Go all in this year. I'm going to give a challenge I've given before here at Catalyst Church. I'm going to give it. Maybe for some of you, it's a fresh one. For others of you, it's a recommitment. I want to encourage you to go all in with God and here at Catalyst Church for a year. So starting now, August of 2024 through next year, give it a year of your life and go all in. Meaning, here's what I mean. I'm going to prioritize weekend worship. I'm not going to just, if I'm not going to, I'm going to say no to other things for it. I'm going to say no to the brunch for worship, no to travel sports for worship, no to the parties for worship. I'm going to, I'm, I'm not just going to come to church. I'm going to get involved in church. I'm, I'm going to join a group come September. Come, come on. Community groups launch in September. I'm going to engage in 21 days of prayer. You're going to be on that prayer call tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. You're going to be, if you live in the D.C. area, at a prayer gathering next Saturday at, at 9 a.m. You're going to go through our next steps. Come on. Hey, I, I got an announcement too. If you live in the D.C. area, our next steps class is actually transitioning. We have been having it after our 12 p.m. service. We are shifting it now to happen during our 12 p.m. service. Here's why uh, we realize that it's a better time frame to have it uh, at 12 p.m. and not after 12 p.m. So we want to better serve you and meet your needs. So starting next Sunday during the 12 p.m. service, you can attend Next Steps. It's going to be up on the third floor at the Bethesda Hotel. Uh, we're going to have a team there going to help you to get connected into the life of the church. If you haven't gone through Next Steps, go through Next Steps. Join a dream team. Get involved in the life of the church. Go all in with all we do. Serve, give, read your scriptures, pray during the week. When you go all in with God, go all in here at Catalyst Church. And I say this from, from now, years of experience pastoring people in my own life. If you do that, I promise you your life will be better because of it. So give it a year of your life if you haven't before. And I know you'll be glad that you did. Jeremiah 29, many of you heard verse 11. The Bible says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They're plans for good, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. We love that scripture, right? Put it on our, on our wall at home, on our desk. Come on, God, I know you have a plan for me, a purpose, a future and a hope. But catch this, verse 12 says, in those days when you pray, I'll listen. Watch this, verse 13. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you'll find me. If. 
So I got a plan for you. I got a purpose for you if you look for me wholeheartedly. Listen, he was saying this to a group, to the people of God, because they have drifted away from God. And because of that they were living in exile, they, they, were, they were having a hard time because they were living in disobedience from God. And he says, man, if you will seek me wholeheartedly, man, listen, I want you, I have a plan for you. I have a purpose for you. Aren't you grateful for the mercy and the grace of God that even when we fail, even when we mess up, his mercies are new every morning. He said, I still have a plan for you and a purpose for you. Someone needs to hear that because maybe you've been far from God. Maybe you've messed up. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. He's got a future and a hope, but his invitation today is seek me wholeheartedly. I remember a few years ago, I had a friend of mine he had, upon my recommendation, he had visited uh, an area of the Dominican Republic. Uh, it's an area my wife, Christine, and I have been to vacation, and we enjoy it. And he went, and he came back, and he said, he said, man, Jeremy, you, you, you told me how much you enjoy going where you go, but, but we didn't really enjoy it that much. I said, really? He said, yeah, it was okay. I said, well, well did, you, did you try all the different restaurants and enjoy the different cuisines at your resort? No, we just kind of hit a couple of them. I said, well, did you go snorkeling? They have great areas of snorkeling, some reefs out there. No. Well, did you like go swim with some stingrays and some sand sharks? No. Did you go on the ATVs? Like that's, that's, or, or, how about a catamaran? They have a catamaran at sunset. It's beautiful. No. I said, you, you didn't enjoy the island because you didn't go all in with the island. Like you, you just kind of dipped your toe in. You didn't really explore. And here's what I found as a pastor. People will say, I've given church a try. Yeah, I've, I've given a try. It's okay. It's not for me. But then I'll ask them, well, uh, did, did, you, did you come every Sunday? Oh, no. Uh, did, did, you, did you seek God on Monday through prayer and, and reading the Bible? No. Did you get involved in a group? No. Did you, go, did you serve on a team? No. This, then I say, you didn't go wholeheartedly. The reason you didn't experience the best of God is because you didn't give God your best. If you want the best that God has for you, you need to give him your best. I'm going to go all in. So here's my challenge is go all in with God. Go all in with God and you will experience God's best. Let me speak to the people that maybe you've lost your joy or maybe you once went all in with God, but maybe God has slowly become an accessory. He's he's become more on the periphery and and you once were faithful in church, but now you just go a few times a month, maybe once a month. Or you you once were involved in the dream team, but now you no longer served. You you once were faithful reading the Bible and praying throughout the week, but now now you barely pick up the scriptures. Can I encourage you is go all in once again today. All right, here's point number two. We're going to get a little more practical. First, though, you got to make a decision. I'm going to go all in with you, God. I'm, I'm wholeheartedly, I'm going to give you a year of my life. I'm going to experience all that you have for me here at Catalyst Church, all that you have for me in this relationship. But here's number two, is you're going to decide, I'm going to spend time with God every day. I'm going to spend time with God every day. Psalms 5.3, David says, listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring my request to you and I wait expectantly. I love that. David says, I'm, I'm seeking you, God, first thing in the morning. You know, David was called a man after God's own heart. He sought God. Jesus in Mark 1.35, it said before daybreak, so before the sun came up, Jesus got up and he went to an isolated place to pray. You know, the gospel of Mark shows several times that Jesus got up before sunlight and went away alone to spend time with the Father. That He sought God in the morning. Now listen, I know not everybody is a morning person. But I do think there's something of giving God the first of your day. Maybe you're thinking, well, pastor, can I give God any part of the day? You can. But, but David and Daniel and Moses and Jesus sought God in the morning. There's something to the first of your day. Not being scrolling TikTok, not being looking at the news, not being checking your email, not be whatever it might be. But it's, it's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to seek you. God. I'm going to give God the first of my day. And let me say this. It is hard to have a quality relationship with God without spending regular time with God. Let me say it this way. If you're married or maybe you hope to be married, it would be hard to have a healthy marriage if you only spoke to your spouse once a week or a couple times a month. It'd be hard. So, so if the only time you're hearing from God or having time with God is at church or watching... Then, then it's hard to have a vibrant relationship with God. Listen, I'm not, I'm not, I, there's no shame, no condemnation, but I'm just, I'm, I'm, I want to inspire you. There's more that God has for you, but it involves more than just saying, I'm going to, I'm going to occasionally be in church or watch online. I'm going to, I'm going to have regular time with, with God. So I'm going to get real practical right now. 
Um, I, I, I've taught this before. And uh, so some of you, it's a refresh. For some of you, it's new. But I think it's important sometimes to be reminded of the basics. You know, I'm always reminded of, of a time I watched. Um, I, I heard about a, a, a sports journalist who went to go watch Kobe Bryant practice years ago. And he went to his early practice at 3.30 in the morning, come on, before sunlight. And he was amazed because in Kobe's practice, he never saw Kobe do any like 360s or windmill dunks or crazy shots. He did the basics. And sometimes you just have to be reminded of the basics of the foundation of our relationship with God to keep it vibrant and alive and fulfilling in our lives. So, so he, here's a structure for your time with God. Number one is you have to pick a time with God. Again, I think first in the morning is best. If you're like, Pastor, I'm a, I'm a mom or dad and my kids get up early. No matter how early I get up, they get up early and they, and they end up Inter, in, interfering, well, then maybe during nap time or maybe at night when the kids go to bed. I understand there's, there's circumstances, but, but pick a time. Pick a place. So for me, I have a place, I have a chair in my family room. That's my place where I read the scriptures. And then I actually walk and pray. So I, I, I like to walk around my neighborhood outside. It just sunlight, fresh air, walking, it helps me in my prayer life. But have a place, have a time, have a place, and then have a plan. So have a plan to how your time is structured. Let, let me tell you a little bit about mine, and then I'll, then I'll get to some, some teaching around this. But So for me, I get up in the morning, and uh, before I sit down to, to, to have my time with God, um, I get coffee, because I just think God speaks more clearly when you have Java juice. Come on, somebody. Um, I, have, I have coffee and I have water. And then I, I sit down um, in my chair. And I have, uh, actually with me today, a couple of things that I have with me. Um, I have, I have my Bible, um, I, and I have a reading plan that I follow. Um, we have the Lamp and Light Bible reading plan. I do that one. We're reading the New Testament as a church together. If you haven't joined us, join us. We're in the book of Romans right now. Great time to jump in. Romans is a great book. Um, I also read another reading plan. It's the Bible in one year. So I'm also reading through the Bible in the entire year. So I have my Bible. I have my prayer guide. So we have these online on our website if you're an online family. Um, and then we also have these in person at our guest service area at church um, that I'll speak to this in just a moment. And then I have a journal. Um, and, and for years, I was not a journaler. But I had a pastor challenge me to just begin to journal my time with God. And this has been transformational. I have tons of journals just like this. They look just like this. I have different colors that I journal. I write down what God speaks to me in his word, uh, what he speaks to me in prayer. And it's amazing because I, have, I have a documented history of God's speaking to me uh, and things that he's revealed to me. So I recommend um, become a journaler. Uh, I'll speak to kind of what I write down, but I, but I have this with me each morning. I have my, 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 my reading plans, my prayer guide, and I have my, my journal. And that's, that's, that's my, my, my structure. Now, let me speak to how to order that plan with God. You know, in the Bible, there are three different uh, named angels. Uh, there are several more, but there's three named angels um, that speak to, I think, three elements to have in your time with God. Let me share them first. There's the, there's the angel Gabriel. Gabriel is the angel that delivered the message to Mary that she was to give birth to the Messiah, to Jesus. Um, Gabriel also delivered a message to Daniel in the Old Testament. Every time you see Gabriel in the scriptures, he's delivering a message from God. The angel Gabriel represents the word of God. Then there's the angel Michael. Michael was the archangel. He was the chief angel. Every time you see Michael in scriptures, he's in war. He's in battle. So in Daniel 10, Daniel's praying for 21 days. If you ever wonder, pastor, where do we get 21 days from? From the Bible, Daniel. He prayed for 21 days. And the Bible says the, that, that Michael was warring with the, with the king of Persia. Uh, he was in battle. Michael always represents prayer. So word, prayer. The last angel is Lucifer which is a fallen angel. Uh, he is now our adversary. Uh, but Lucifer represented worship. He was a worshiper. Now he fell because he wanted worship directed at him and not God. But, but these three elements, the word and prayer and worship, by the way, these are three things the enemy always is trying to battle us in. You know, We see in the scriptures that, that, that the enemy tried to get Adam and Eve to even Question God's word. Did God really say, you know, we see Jesus in the, in the, in, in the wilderness. Did, did God really, he, he was testing the word, word, prayer, 
worship. These are three elements that we have in all of our worship services. We start with worship. We then have a moment of prayer. We then go into the message, the word, and we end with prayer, part of our services. These are three elements to have with your time with God. Let me break those down. So, so first is, is I give God my worship. I begin with worship. There is something powerful to beginning your day with worship. So for me, I have headphones, noise canceling. Come on, somebody, because I have three little ones still sleeping in the mornings uh, that I put my headphones in so I can, I can worship and ha- I put on a few songs. So I usually play a few songs through my time with God um, to worship God in the morning. There's something powerful to worship and praise starting your day that way. I remember last spring during the school year, uh, there was one morning, uh, my children, uh, they were having some, some, some loud disagreements uh, in our household. They were having some, uh, some, some disputes and uh, I was getting them ready for school. So what I did was I began to put on worship music. I was like, you know what? They're they're kind of they're kind of they kind of woke up a little bit of a funky mood. I'm gonna put on some worship music, and I played one of their favorites. Played one of their favorite songs it's called "Praises" by a worship band called Elevation Rhythm, and uh, the lyrics are: "All my friends just want to be famous, living life with a lot of time wasted, but I choose you. You're what's missing. I choose you. Now I'm different." And it's like this, like, it's got a like nice beat to it. And the next thing I know, we're literally having a praise dance party in the kitchen singing, all my friends just want to be famous. And, and we're having a blast. The tone of the house changed. Hey, parents, if you want to shift an atmosphere in your house, play some praise and worship music. I'm telling you, it works. It works. The Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. Like he, his presence is attracted to our praise and our worship. In fact, David said this, this is the day the Lord has made. So we will rejoice. I'll find my joy again and be glad in it. So listen, I don't know what my day holds, but I know my day is going to begin with praise. So I'm not going to begin my day by listening to my favorite podcast or the news. I'm going to begin by worshiping and praising God. Watch this. I'm going to give you a challenge. 21 days, the next 21 days, start your day with praise and worship and see how it will change your spirit, change your day. I don't know what your day might hold, but I know your day will be different if you begin with praise and worship. So I, I give God my, my worship. Number two is I listen to God through his word. Oh, I love this part. I, I, I love the word of God. I really love the word of God. James 1.25 says, whoever looks intently into the perfect law, that it gives freedom and it continues in it, not forgetting what they've heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. I love that. I love that. I mentioned I go through the lamp and light reading plan and I go through the, the Bible in one year. Listen, we align our life with the Word of God. Something powerful happens. I'm going to tell you what I do when I read the Word of God. When I read the Word, here's what I ask myself. When I read a passage, like I read today, I think it was out of Romans, or early part of Romans, I will read it and I'll think to my, I'll ask myself this. I'll think to myself, I'll be sensitive. What stands out to me about what I just read? Usually a scripture or two. And then I'll think to myself, so what is the Lord asking me to do because of this? Like, how does this now change me because of this truth the Holy Spirit has revealed to me through his word? Those simple questions. What stands out? And then, then what does this mean for me? Are transformative to our life. Now listen to me. This is this is important because we live in a Western culture that we see we see even amongst some uh, segments of Christianity them wanting to change God's word to fit their lifestyle. Listen to me. The Bible doesn't say that we find freedom when we align God's word with our lifestyle. We find freedom when I change my lifestyle to fit God's word. It doesn't say that we experience His blessing. When, when, when we disregard the passages we don't like. No, we experience his blessing even when we apply and we do the passages we find hard to do. Listen, I love you. That's why I'm saying this. But it's true that, that we, we need to embrace even the, the harder passages that are unpopular in the culture we live in. Because that's where freedom is found. Jesus says, I've come to give truth. A truth that sets us free from, the, from, the, from sin. Sets us free from the anxieties of life. And we look around a culture where there are people bound up in sin and anxieties and oppression and addictions. And we have the word of God that sets us free. But we got to align our life with the word of God and say, God, change me through your word. This is important 
that as Christians, we don't just read the Word, as James says, but we actually apply the Word to our life. Are there areas of the Word of God that you already know to do, but you're not doing? Ask, your, ask yourself that question on occasion. Are there things I already know, but I'm not currently doing? I mean, get some accountability. Get some people to pray for you and put it into practice and experience the freedom and blessing that God has for you. So I, I, I give God my worship. I listen to God through the Word. Also, if you're just starting out with your time with God, um, start with like 15 minutes. We call it the first 15. I got it from a, uh, another pastor. But five minutes in worship, five minutes in the Word, which the lamp and light reading plan will take you no more than five minutes, and then five minutes in prayer. Now, this may grow over the course of time for you. It probably will. But, but the third is, as I talk to God in prayer, Jesus says, when you pray, go into your room, close the door, pray to your Father who is unseen, then your Father who sees what's done in secret will reward you. That God rewards us when we seek Him in prayer. This is important. I want you to get this in your spirit as we're in 21 days of prayer. I love a quote. I say it frequently, but, but it's just so powerful. Louis Giglio says, if we knew what happened when we pray, we would never stop praying. Because there's something, Jesus says, ask, you'll receive, not uh, seek, and you'll find, knock, and the door will be open. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. We see all throughout the Bible, listen, the same miracle working God we read about in scriptures is the same God doing miracles today. So I'm going to stir your faith right now as we go into 21 days of prayer. What miracle do you need in your life? Maybe it's a healing in your body or a loved one's body. Maybe it's a restoration of a relationship. Maybe it's provision financially or a job. Maybe it's for God to move. Maybe have a lot of anxiety and you need peace where do you need God to move believe God ask God expect God and I'm believing with you and listen on our 21 days of prayer website we have a link for prayer requests it's a form fill out that online form our team I would love to pray for you we are believing for miracles in these 21 days he is still a miracle working healing supernatural God I'm fired up so listen, so, so, so pray and have a plan to pray. I mentioned I have this, this prayer guide. This prayer guide has structured prayers. Can I tell you, as your pastor, to free somebody up, when I first started my relationship with God back again as an adult, I kind of got the word because I love the word. Um, I'm, a, I'm a passionate person, so I love worship. Prayer was hard for me. And I used to try to wing it in prayer. I'd be like, okay, God, I'm here. Let's pray. Let's talk. And I'd, I'd get about two minutes, and then I'd, I'd, I'm done, okay? I have nothing else to say to you, Lord. And when I would hear people say, I, I mean, I, I, I prayed for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. I'm like, what do you talk to God about? Like, how in the world do you talk that long to God? And I used to actually fall asleep when I prayed back in the day. Like, true story. I used to think I was the worst Christian in the world because I would sit down at my table at like 530 in the morning to pray, and I would fall asleep. And um, it wasn't until I got structure in my prayer life, this guide— transform me. We got this from another church and um, it's, it's transformed because it gives you structure. So it has a structure like the Lord's Prayer, like structured and laid out of steps you can do. The, the one I use the most in here is called the Tabernacle Prayer. It's my favorite. I love it. It walks you through the stages of the tabernacle of types of prayers, things you can pray for. And, and can I tell you, this has transformed my prayer life. I now have a structure to my prayer, a plan to my prayer life, and it has transformed my prayer life. I believe it's going to do it for you. Let me give you one final challenge on your prayer life. Uh, I want you to receive this. Is that before you pray your agenda, pray for God's agenda. What do you mean, Pastor? Before you pray what's on your heart, pray on what, what's on God's heart. What's on God's heart? I'll tell you what's on His heart. He says He came to seek and to save the lost. The Bible says there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. You know what's on God's heart? People who are far from Him. So listen, as you make a prayer list, on top of your prayer list, I'm going to ask you to do this. There's the people in your life that you know, friends, family, co-workers who are far from God. And pray, God, open their eyes that they may see who you really are. They may see the goodness of God, the love of Jesus Christ. They may see the truth so they would come to faith. The greatest miracle still today is people being saved by Jesus Christ. Let's make sure we pray for what's on his heart first. And then September 22nd, mark your calendar. That's like a month and a half from now. 
We're having Better Together Sunday as a church. We're going to begin a relationship series. And that Sunday, invite them to church. And uh, we're believing to see many people come to faith that Sunday, that series, during that time. One last thing I'll say is join us. These 21 21 days of prayer. You joining the prayer calls at 7 a.m. Monday through Friday and the prayer gatherings 9 a.m. next Saturday and every Saturday is going to help you in your prayer life. And we're going to teach you actually at our prayer gatherings how to pray. So it's going to be like, here's, here's how you can pray. And I believe it's really going to help you as you seek God during this time. Now, some of you start saying to yourself, Pastor, I worship, I read my word, and I pray every day. Here, here's my challenge for you who are already doing this. Is what area of these three could you grow in? Here's what I've learned. There are some seasons my time in the Word is great, but my time in prayer, not so much. There are times where my prayer life is strong, but maybe it's worship. I need to grow in my worship. Again, not religious, not because I have to, not a duty, but I want more of what God has for me. So ask yourself that question. All right, here's my final, final point today. Go all in with God. Get, get, spend time with God every day. Number two, or number three rather, is that I'm going to worship with my church family every week. I'm going to worship with my church family. Acts 2, 42. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, and to sharing of meals, and to prayer. The early church were devoted to gathering together. They, they gathered daily. We gather weekly. They gather daily. There's something powerful to being devoted. You know what's intriguing? Um, uh, there's a documentary on Netflix called The Blue Zones. Have you heard, I don't know if you've heard of this, but it's basically um, areas of the world where people, there's, there's more centenarians, people are over 100 years old. It's pretty fascinating. And like, what is it about their life that has led to the, the longevity? You know what they actually found? This is intriguing in their research. That attending church services four times a month increases your life expectancy by four to 14 years. Come on, somebody. I've been telling you church is good for you. It's going to make you live longer. By gathering and being a part of a local church family and being in relationships with other people, other believers, to be a part of a church. The early church were devoted, devoted. That word devoted, what that means is, is that it wasn't like uh, an option. It wasn't like, I'll go to church and gather with my church family if, if, it, if it makes sense for me. They were devoted. They did it regardless of what was going on in their life. They were devoted. They were committed. And can I tell you my own life? The growth I've experienced in my own life is in part because I grew up in a home where my family were devoted to the house of God. They, they, I don't remember a Sunday where I, we weren't in church. Like, like, unless we were like sick. Like I had to be real sick. Like sick, sick. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you no, know, like, mom, I'm, I'm sick. <coughs> like you had to be like fever, like real sick. Come on, somebody. Like, like we, we, were, we were in church. And then when I became an adult and I, I came back to faith, I remember I devoted myself. Um, and, and I think back and I, I thank God that my mom and dad were devoted to church. They, we were in church, come on somebody, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night prayer service, Tuesday night youth group, like we were in church. And then as an adult, when I came to faith in Christ, this might seem insignificant to you, but some of you will get me. Um, I, I love NFL football. I, I still do. I love NFL football. I cheer for God's favorite team, the Baltimore Ravens. We all know it to be true. Purple, royalty, King Jesus, you know. But I remember when I came to Christ, um, again, this might seem so insignificant to some of you, but, but to me it was a big deal. I used to watch football all day on Sunday, literally 10 a.m. pregame, 1 p.m. game, 4 p.m. game, 8 p.m. Sunday night game, all day football. So when I came to faith in Christ, giving up watching the pregame where I made all of my adjustments for my fantasy football team, I'd miss part of the 1 p.m. game. That was a, it's still the sacrifice. Like I still lay that down, Lord, as a worship. But can I tell you? I have never once regretted being devoted to the house of God. Even before I was a pastor, like being devoted to the house of God. I have grown so much. My life has been blessed by it. And I know that your life will be blessed by it too if you do it. I'm going to go all in. Listen, I know there's, there's times you travel or you're sick and you can't attend. But if you live in the D.C. area, be at Catalyst Church in person. Uh, every Sunday you're in town. You're not sick. You're not traveling. Let me say to parents real quick. This is important. Because your children, whether or not they come to church, is dependent on you. 
Um, and it's important. Listen, when you get to heaven, but stand before God as parents, listen, we will not answer to God of whether or not we got our, had our kids involved in soccer or in violin or in Frisbee camp. Come on, somebody. We will answer before God on whether or not we raise them in the ways of God. And I want to encourage you to have in your spirit what Joshua did, that as for me and my house, we are going to serve God. And can I just encourage you is let your children see how you say no to other things, parties and brunches and travel sports and all the things for the sake of the house of God and for the sake of God. Let them see that, listen, as for our house, we seek first the kingdom of God. And listen, our, ch- our children's ministry, our student ministry, they go through great lengths to, to create great ministry environments and experiences for your children. We have a graded curriculum, so it builds on each other. Some parents, in the same way you would not have them miss multiple days or multiple weeks of instruction in, church, in school, is to not have them miss multiple weeks of church. They're missing out on all that God has for them. And I can tell you, if you have them in the house of God, you'll be glad you did as good seed will be sown into their life that will bear fruit for a long time. All right, my last scripture today. Hebrews 10.25. I love this one. Author of Hebrews says this. Let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now. The day of his return is drawing near. I love that. It says, don't neglect gathering together. Well, I love this though. Watch this. But encourage one another. Watch this. So, so he's saying, don't just gather to worship to be encouraged, but come to encourage other people. That there's something to. The Bible says those who refresh others, they themselves will be refreshed. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than to re. See, so I'm not just coming to church for my needs. I'm coming to meet other people's needs. I'm not just coming to be encouraged. I'm coming to encourage. I'm not just coming to be prayed for. I'm coming to pray for others. That's why some of the, some of the most, the, the, the people that you'll walk in on Sunday morning, they'll be the happiest, most fulfilled. I, I mean this. Are going to be people who are holding this sign. Come on, you've seen them. Smile. It's Sunday. It's reminding you. If you came in, you had a rough, hey, smile, it's Sunday. And they're smiling. And they've been there far before you got there. Some of them even set up. They've been up since 5 a.m., even earlier. And they have a smile on their face. Why? Because they, are, they have come to encourage, not just to be encouraged. Or come on, somebody. Some of the happiest, most fulfilled people you're going to meet on a Sunday morning are wearing a blue vest just like this one. Come on. I'm joining the kids' team today. Come on, somebody. I know some of you right now are going to be joining the kids' team when you come back next week. But come on. You wear this. You see this blue. If you've been to Catalyst Church, you see this blue vest for our Catalyst kids' team. Come on. And when you walk in, I drop my kids off. They're smiling. Oh, it's so good to see you, Abigail. It's so good. They're happy. Why? Because they came to church not just to be encouraged. They're coming to encourage our youngest members of the church. Shout out to our kids ministry. Come on. Uh, but, But listen, why? Because they understand. Listen, I'm not just saying this because... We like need people to serve. No, I'm saying this because this is the way that God designed it. It's actually best for us when we get our eyes off of ourselves. Part of our worship, watch this, write this down, somebody. Part of our worship is not just coming to receive, it's when we come to give. That it actually does more for our spirit and for our lives. Listen, you can't have a vibrant, growing relationship with God that brings you joy, that brings you fulfillment. The kind of relationship when you get up in the morning, uh, true, uh, I mean this with all sincerity, I get up in the mornings and I cannot wait to pray. I really can't. I really can't. Now, not every morning. There's some mornings you'll get up and you'll kind of say, you know what, I'm going to do this. I don't feel like reading my word. I didn't sleep well last night. I'm a little bit sick. Kids are already up. You may not feel it. There are some mornings where you got to do something you don't feel, but come on, you'll be glad you did it. You'll feel better because you did it. But I'm telling you, listen, you can have a vibrant, growing relationship with God where you spend time with God every day. And then you can have that when you gather with your church and you gather to worship God and lift up King Jesus and worship and you hear the word and, and prayer and your spirit will be lifted. And this is key to living the fulfilled life that God has for us. Let me pray for you this morning. I'll pray for two groups, as I do each Sunday. But I want to pray, if you're watching, and maybe you're thinking to yourself, Pastor, I, I felt like this message was for me. There was something God had for me. I, I, I need to go all in. I, I've been maybe in, out. 
I'm ready to go all in. I'm ready to spend time with God. I'm ready to, I'm ready to lean in on 21 days of prayer. I'm ready to experience all that God has for me. I want to pray for you today. Maybe, maybe, maybe as well, you're, you're watching and, and you've, you've been in, but, but you're recognizing, you know what? My, my prayer life is not where I want it to be. It's not where it could be. Or maybe you're like, you know what? I, I'm a part of Catalyst. But I haven't taken that step to come in and be an encouragement to others. I've just been coming for my own encouragement. I want to pray for you, experience all that God has for you. Here's the second group, though, and it speaks to point one. Maybe you've never gone all in with God. Like you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. If that's you, I want to pray with you to put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior today. To make that, you can make that decision. It's the best decision you'll ever make. Or maybe you once did, but you've, you've grown distant from God. I, I, I've been where you were years ago. You need to recommit your life today saying, Jeremy, I'm going back all in with Jesus today. So let me do this. If that's you in a moment, I'm going to pray with you. Let me pray with that first group, then I'll pray with that second group. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person. Lord, you spoke to them in this message through your word to, to Lord, to go take another step of going all in with you. Lord, to growing and by spending time with you every day in prayer and in your word and in worship. And Lord, by also worshiping with their church family. Lord, being an encouragement. God, I pray that you would give them the courage and the strength. Lord, take the steps they need to take to experience all that you have for them. In Jesus' name. I'm going to pray for that second group. In fact, if, if, you, if you are praying this prayer, pray this prayer with us as I pray with you, as you enter that relationship with Jesus for the first time or you recommit your life to him. Just pray this prayer with us. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for going to the cross and giving your life for me. I believe you rose again. I confess you are Lord of my life. And I ask you lead me and you guide me in this life all the way into eternity with you. As I repent of my sin, and I turn fully to you today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hey, church family, throw up some, some party emojis, some hand clap emojis for those who prayed that prayer. Hey, if you did in all sincerity, please let us know on that digital connection card. In fact, if you're a first-time guest with us on that digital connection card, let us know. We'd love to follow up with you, give you some next steps, as well as if you made a commitment to Christ, let us know. We'd love to give you some next steps to grow in your relationship with God. We're so excited for you and that decision that you made today. Well, hey, as we close, a couple final announcements. Number one is if you are a guest, again, thank you. Fill out that connection card. We'd love to meet you in person if you live in the D.C. area. Uh, join us next Sunday, church. We'll be back at the Bethesda Hotel at 9 o'clock, 1030, 12 o'clock, back there. We'd love to see you there um, as we continue on in this series in 21 Days of Prayer. Join us tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. via Zoom. It's on our website in our newsletter for our prayer call. I'll be leading it. I can't wait to see you there as we seek God together as a church family. And next Saturday, our prayer gathering at 9 a.m. Would love to see you there in person at the Bethesda Hotel as we seek God together. It's gonna be a great, great time. Love you, church. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you soon.